All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Welcome to this talk about uh, deploying HCI with vSAN, uh, build versus buy. We're going to get into some of the options, some of the architecture decisions people make after they make the decision to adopt hyperconverged infrastructure, or HCI for short. A little bit about me really quickly. My name is Ken Nalbon. I uh, am a V expert, VMUG leader out of Indianapolis, uh, a bunch of things. This is all the places you can find me online. Really, if you were listening to the keynote earlier today, Amy Lewis said, pick a platform. Mine's Twitter. That's the best way to reach me. If you ever have questions or you want to heckle me or whatever, it's all fair game. You can find me on Twitter and all those other places. Um, some people will probably tell you they think that 2018 is the year of HCI. I disagree. I think 2017 already was. We could see in the third quarter of uh, 2017 that HCI revenue across the spectrum surpassed $1 billion. And that was up 68% over the same time the last year. Uh, so uh, I, in my role as a uh, pre-sales architect with a reseller, often find myself in conversations these days with customers who are interested in adopting HCI. When they want to know what their options are out there. Being that this is a VMUG, I'm not going to cover the entire spectrum of products, but I'm going to focus instead more on just the ways that you can deploy and purchase vSAN. So what's on my next slide? Oh, why are people adopting it? Uh, it really comes down to one word. HCI is easier, right? Uh, it's easier to lifecycle. You've got all kinds of products that automate the process of upgrading the software and the firmware and everything. It's easier to deploy. You just put more racks, nodes in the rack when you want to scale. Easier in multiple ways. Looking at what's next. One reason not to deploy it, I would say CapEx savings. Um, it is true, sometimes you can see a lower barrier to entry like I have in the graph here. You know, with the traditional converged infrastructure, you might make several or a few very large purchases starting with a huge initial investment. And then after a little while, you need to scale your storage, another large chunk of investment for more disks and shelves or whatever, as opposed to HCI. It's the model where you purchase maybe just what you need today. Maybe you want it to last a year or you know a few quarters, and then you can scale that infrastructure in small chunks over time. But over time, both models tend to be pretty similar. You're, you're not go rolling HCI to save money by and large. Some people like to get in soft costs. You know, it saves on OPEX because of this and that, and I'm not even going to touch those because they're very difficult to quantify for us technical guys. Talk to your finance people. They may be able to figure that out, but that is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about savings with HCI. CapEx, going to be pretty much the same. Um, so VMware's product, vSAN, um, you know, that's, that's what they build hyperconverged on, and the question is, you know, what can I use, or what applications can I put on vSAN? And really, the answer is, what do you got? I put this slide in here not to you know, address every single one of these use cases. And likewise, I put in the next one that looks almost identical, not because I feel like I'm going to be talking to service providers, but because I like the fact that they illustrate the point that whatever the application is, it's likely a good fit for vSAN and HCI in general just some different architecture decisions that might come into play, whether you're talking about having you know, a CPU-bound application, so you want to stick a lot of cores in your nodes. Maybe you have something I.O. intensive, you're going all flash instead of hybrid. Maybe you're doing VDI and you have a lot of power users and you're going to stick GPUs in there. Just design considerations to make. When architecting HCI, it's a flexible enough architecture design that you can just create it to fit your needs, I guess you could say. Um, when is HCI a not a good fit? You know, Really, I feel like the only limitations are not technical, they're more logistical. Like, say you've got an application that's licensed per socket or core, you're probably not going to put it on your 20 plus node HCI cluster just to save on licensing. Or maybe you have an application that needs to run on a certified platform. You know, it's an enterprise application. SAP HANA is a good example. It's not certified to run on H any HCI platform yet. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't run. It means you better not put it on there if you ever want to have calls to su support, because the first thing they're going to tell you is move it off of there. Again, not really technical limitations, more logistic. Um, so say you decide HCI is the platform for you, and you decide you like vSAN. You know, for many of the reasons on here, the primary one you know, probably being that it's integrated into vSphere. That makes management easier. That makes uh, life cycling easier. That gives you a single, use, easy to use interface. A lot of times when people discuss what HCI means to them, the definitions vary. But I think that you know, they can all agree that it really has to do with making infrastructure easier to consume. And the fact that vSAN is integrated into the kernel and it's administered through vCenter, you don't have another management point, makes it a little bit more compelling. A lot of times I end up talking with customers about how vSAN stores data. 
they need to get used to the fact that it is no longer really a RAID group, but that data is stored according to policies. So, you know, we don't have a ton of time, so I'm not going to go over exactly what storage policy-based management is and how it works, but it's a good term to Google and find many of the blog posts and articles that exist out there. Um, but, you know, when you decide to buy, vSAN, to buy vSAN, what platform you're going to put it on and how you're going to deploy it, which product you choose depends on where you fall on what Dell EMC likes to call the build versus buy spectrum. I'm not a Dell EMC employee. Um, I just you know, borrowed one of their slides. Uh, I like to also think of these uh, two terms in terms of flexibility versus simplicity. You can't really have both at the same time. You're going to have to give up one for the other. Do you want the flexibility to decide exactly what hardware you're going to run, what software versions you're going to have on it when you do upgrades, or do you want an infrastructure that has been engineered and designed and is ready to go from day one? You rack it, uh, it the life cycle is controlled by the vendor that you purchased it from, and you're off to the races running workloads without really sweating the small stuff. Then you're a buyer. In terms of what products fit where on the spectrum, obviously, if you can build your own vSAN cluster down to the, you know, I've got my old host and I just want to throw a controller and disks in them, you can do that. You're going to have, you're going to spend a lot of time validating things like hardware compatibility lists. And if it's not in there, if you're really brave, you might just validate the controller yourself that you're going to put disks on by looking at the QDEF and things like that. A lot of people don't like to worry about those kinds of things. On the far end of the spectrum, there are a couple options that are based on vSAN. The most popular one that we see often enough as a reseller is VxRail. Uh, there are a couple others. There's, there's a lot of HCI products on the buy end of the spectrum. But when it comes to vSAN, there's only like one or two. VxRail is one of them. Lenovo has something now. I can't really think of any others that are just like a turnkey infrastructure that has all the software ready to go out of the box for you. Maybe there are others, maybe somebody will educate me, but for me, when I'm in conversations with customers, that's where I tend to go uh, if I sense that they're more of a buyer than a builder. So I'll start with that. Uh, VxRail, um, you know, a few bullet points the way that I describe it to customers. Uh, it's basically the easy button for HCI. It's got uh, automated uh, setup and upgrades of hardware and software. In fact, it is so, um, automated, it requires professional services to install. They have an uh, automated um, run book, I guess you could say, that you know, they, they spit or they feed all the data into about how the deployment's going to look. They have to make sure that they format it correctly, and this would be the professional services installer. Then they feed it to something called VXR Manager, and it just spits out an SDDC for you, uh, you know, an hour or two later, however long it takes for the install to run. Now, now you have a vSAN cluster with a vCenter and everything ready to run. Uh, and it includes the VMware and Dell EMC suite of software. For, so, the, so for the people who want to stay in the VMware stack, this is a perfect solution for them. What you get with it is you know, everything you see here and more. Um, but really, that's what people like about it is that they can continue to use the vSphere licenses they already have, if they wish. And it comes with vSAN Enterprise. They don't have to buy that license. It's part of the bomb, basically. Uh, and you've got some data protection options, like Recover Point for VMs, not pictured in here. They give you a little bit of data domain virtual edition. The secret sauce right there in the middle is VxRail Manager. That's what controls the entire lifecycle of the product. It's also what prevents you from doing anything off script, meaning if you wanted to be on vSphere 6.5 and vSAN 6.6, you had to wait until Dell EMC released the newest version of their VxRail manager and VxRail software from version 4.0 to 4.5 before you could do that. If you have an itchy trigger finger, if you'd like to be on the cutting edge, and that's not the product for you, but for most customers, it's fine. Shortly after vSphere 6.5 update 1 came out, and then what time was that? Late summer last year, we want to say? I think it was about November, VxRail version 4.5, the software update arrived. That's not too much of a lead time. Nobody's really going to be bothered too much by that. And I didn't turn off my... Okay, let me just turn off my uh, Wi-Fi here so I don't keep getting notifications. Where is it? There we go. Okay, good. There's no pop-ups on the screen either. It's just making noise. How you buy it, again, a li little bit of flexibility. You have a few options. But um, this is pretty much it. You've got a few different sizes of nodes, a few different series. You can change things like, you know, the CPUs can be greater than what is the default. And you can put in more RAM and more disk. You can make decisions about hybrid versus all flash. Note, uh, I would not encourage pretty much anybody currently oh, to buy the G series. Um, it's not Dell EMC hardware uh, as of, you know, 
generation 13 or whatever you would say, they were using Quanta servers and Dell EMC guys just basically tell most customers, don't bother. Uh, they will be releasing probably a new version um, very soon based on Gen 14 Dell hardware, so then you're probably good to go there. So that's for the buyers. For the builders, they're gonna you know, build their own vSAN because you know, they wanna continue to use the VMware ecosystem of products. They get the, uh, to control the product versions and upgrades on their own schedule when they choose when to. And there is a large selection of hardware instead of just having to buy nodes from Dell EMC if you go with VxRail. This is a screenshot from the VMware website of all the partners that have what are called vSAN ready nodes. If you choose to buy your, to build yourself, please, 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 at least start with the vSAN ready nodes guide. You can work with your VMware partner, the vendor, to basically build a config for you and you'll notice this document listing all the builds for vSAN ready nodes is over 200 pages long, 263 as of uh, January of this year. Great place to start, saves you a lot of work and you'll get a product that is ready to run vSAN as soon as it lands at your doorstep. It's not just the hardware, it's also firmware and things like that that have been validated by VMware thanks to the hardware manufacturer basically shipping them product and saying, here you go, please test it for us. With vSAN 6.6, VMware's done a great job of basically maturing the product to the point where it makes things a lot easier for people who are builders as opposed to buyers. And I showed this slide not to basically go over every single feature that the product has now, but more along the lines of saying, it's mature, it's stable, it's ready for prime time, and you can just run it yourself now. Don't worry anymore, it's not the bleeding edge, let the big boys do it type application. One feature I do like to mention though, uh, when mentioning vSAN 6.6 to customers, if they really choose to build, is to use the Config Assist. It's great, it will validate configs for you, it will tell you when you have new firmware updates available for certain hardware that is on the HCL. It doesn't do everything for you, you're still gonna have probably a separate management point for your servers themselves, but it's, it, 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 it really speeds things along. So the takeaways there were, HCI is easier and there is a broad, por broad portfolio of options depending on your preference. And yes, it has a lower barrier of entry, to, but it is similar overall in costs over the long term to traditional converged infrastructure. So hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. Like I said, that's the easiest place to find me. I'm at Ken Nalbon. Appreciate it. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>